quirky. <laughs> oh dear, I've had to change things this morning. All right, let's have a look. I'm not sure if anyone can hear me. I've got to work out how to get the comments going on here. Okay, I'm on here. On sideways. That's no good. Alright, let's see if I can turn this around. Hang on. Slide that up. Unplug it. Alright, now we're the right way up. Okay, Wolf said hello, so somebody can see me, that's good. I'm having some technical difficulties this morning, which is very normal for me. All right, let's see if we can get that <laughs> sitting up. Oh, Faye can hear me. Thank you, Faye. All right, and now I'm the right way up. Yeah, all right. Let me see. I want to see if I can get the comments on my laptop. Here we go, so I can read them. All right. See, it's been a while since I've done this. All right, so there are five people here. So welcome, everybody. And if you could maybe just drop in the comments um, like where you're from, that would be fantastic. Oh, this live is is unlisted. Thank you, Joshua. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> unlisted um all right let me see if i can fix that i tried to do it on my macbook and um i couldn't get the camera to work so uh let me have a look content live uh unlisted you're right it says unlisted public publish all right thank you so much for that joshua Oh, Bron. Hello, Bron. Hey, haven't seen you for ages. Hey. All right. I've just changed it to public. So hopefully it will work now. Oh, hopefully it'll work. Um, come via link on my previous video. Yeah, I went in. So what happened was I had scheduled the video through my MacBook. And when I went to do it this morning, it said I couldn't access the camera. And I tried, mucked around trying to work out how to do it. And I just couldn't work it out. So we'll do it on the phone. I did make a new link and put it in that comment. So that's really good. Oh, Wolfra from Queensland. Hey, Coralie found it. Hello, Coralie. Lethal Hope. And I can't remember who, what your name is, but I did get your, your comment. Thank you very much. And I'm trying to get the comments on my MacBook so that I can follow along a bit easier. Let me have a look. Excellent, all right. Oh, I've got more people coming in. Deb from Victoria, hi Deb. Oh, wow. And Bron, what state are you in now? So I, everyone doesn't know, I met up with Bron in Tasmania when she was there in her van and uh, she's traveling around Australia. Um, hoping for an art update as well today. Oh, we probably can do some art updates. I am in the van, so everything is in here with me. Oh, Bron's still in Victoria. Oh, it must be going to get cold there soon, Bron, I imagine. But you were just in Tasmania, so that's you're used to that. Uh, Karen, hello, welcome. Riverland Adventures. I'm not sure what your name is, but welcome. Oh, this is good. Oh, there's 25 people now, so people are finding it. I'll just give people a few more minutes. To find it um, seeing as I made the mess up and then I'll get started on filling you all in on what's happening Deb here from Queensland sewing in your PJs I love that I love that handle that's really good <laughs> I should like art in my PJs that's what I do oh Doug from East Tennessee USA welcome I was on zoom call yesterday someone one of my patreons is from um, Nashville Tennessee we were chatting with her and she said you're having beautiful weather there at the moment and it's interesting the one time I went to Nashville um, when I was living in Toronto it was in April and it was spectacular I actually went for like Easter for 10 days so that's awesome oh more and more people are coming in 
Move land, change your name for privacies. We spoke of, oh, Cheryl, hello, Cheryl. I understand the privacy thing, um, 100%. Actually, and there's a video I wanna make about privacy. Um, but while, while everyone's here, I'll just, while I remember, I will let you know. So I got this, this um, hint from another lady on YouTube that travels in her van, and I've noticed it lately. So I use my phone hotspot for my internet, and it's just labeled as iPhone. But I have noticed when you go into your computer and you search, like I do Wi-Fi settings to find available networks, people put the name of their phone. Like it might say Cheryl's phone, Tom's phone, you know, Donna's phone. And this lady warned against that because if you're in a campground and there aren't many people there, someone could come knocking on your door and go, oh, hi, Donna, you know, uh, such and such sent me and they can pretend to know you or know somebody that knows you. And I thought that was really, really good advice. So don't label your hotspot or your phone with your name if you can. Um, so that's just my little piece of advice there. Linda from Victoria, it said you were alive and then went to, into it home, almost finished. I had to delete the other one. Sorry, Linda. Um, that may have been the other one. I did have to delete it. And for a while, this one was on unlisted. So. I really apologize. I haven't done a live since December and yeah, life has been crazy. Broad, yes, change your name, please. Um, and Ken's there, hi Ken. Oh, it's great. I think this time is really good to get people in the US and people in Australia. And I'm not sure about the time in um, like Europe and everything. Um, please hit the like button and good evening. Oh, hey Doug, thanks for the support there. <laughs> doing a bit of promotion for me that's awesome hey okay. yeah the hot spot is really good advice I am going to put it in a video um, because I have really noticed it lately uh, like I said when I, I'm going to, to log in and people have the names and yeah it can be quite dangerous especially if you're traveling on your own your woman it can be quite dangerous because you think oh they know me or they know yeah so anyway all right I might get started there's 37 people I might get started with what's happening now anyone that's here from my patreon they all know so patreon have been kept up to date with everything that's been happening this year and they do know it's been a lot um so i'm gonna i'm trying to i'm trying to read the comments and not look at the camera so i apologize so let's start with first of all welcome everybody and thank you for being here i really appreciate everyone that's here and i really appreciate just feeling supported by you and knowing that you understand when my life is happening and I can't always be here on YouTube. I do really appreciate that. Thank you. The, the really true people, like the people I feel, uh, yeah, are real, are here. All right, let's go to January. So January, I started the year um, with a house sit and I'll explain to you why. So the last two summers I spent in Tasmania and that was no problem with camping and everything like that. Hello, frog lover 7967. Anyway, um, and my first year in the van, I spent in West Australia for the summer, but it was COVID. So there weren't many people here because West Australia, I don't know if people know, if you're in Australia, you know, don't know about the rest of the world. West Australia shut their border for COVID. People could not come in and it was shut for about 18 months. People could not come in. So it was, I was, I realized now I was spoiled rotten. I had the whole place to myself. So that was fine. So this summer when I came back and I was, you, want, you will kind of want to be in the Southwest for the summer. That's where it's coolest. And I was going to these different campsites and everything. They were all booked out solid for the month of January. And there isn't really any free camping down the Southwest. It's very popular. And so I realized that uh, I did find one place that would take me. Um, and uh, but they were, I was going to be packed out and really busy and then so I thought I'll just check the um, I'll just check the house sitting situation anyway and I found this one which was in the southwest area it was for six weeks starting from January 2nd uh, and it looked really good so it was in a small really small country town like population of 200 people but only 10 minutes from a bigger town with supplies shops and everything so I did that and it was going really well and that's where I made my first couple of videos from that you saw in January I was in their garden it was really nice and um, and then the heat waves hit we got hit with about f I think I went through three or four 
heat waves that were over 40 degrees Celsius for three or four days in a row. And I actually have some, I'm, I'm gonna make a video of this because my wave two air conditioner saved the day. So just to clarify, I was not staying in the house. I was staying in my van and my van was parked under cover and I had access to like a little kind of granny flat room that wasn't air conditioned. Now, I had access to the house that was air conditioned, but the dogs weren't allowed in the house. So I pretty well spent all the time in my van with the dogs, with my air conditioner going full bore. And it was brilliant. But it was like three or four days of just being in the van and you go a bit crazy. Um, after a while, I worked out how to I worked out how to manage it so when it was cooler I did everything you can do in the cooler days and then I saved like all my work and everything for when it was um, you know really hot and I was stuck in the van I could just sit and work um, so that was January and I was supposed to leave there I think about the 11th of February and I ended up having to leave four days early because my mum went into hospital and my mum was quite sick so I ended up leaving there four days early. They were really good about it and let me leave. And if you're watching this, thank you very much. Um, and um, I went to, my mom was in hospital. I ended up staying there for three weeks. She was in hospital for three weeks and I was staying at her house and taking care of her dog and also going to visit her in the hospital. Uh, she was only about 10 minutes from the hospital and my sisters and I, we just made sure we were going to appointments where like she had specialists coming in, she saw everybody. And my mom is 84 years old now. And we just made sure that she was gonna get the best care possible that she could get and that they knew everything that was going on. So that was all consuming for three weeks and exhausting, as you can imagine, mentally and emotionally, I was just totally exhausted. Anyway, so I left there and then I went to recover and that's when I put the community post up saying that, you know, I've had a busy year, I'm back, I'm rested and I'm going to start making videos. And then I just got rested up, it had been two weeks and then Abby tore her cruciate ligament. Now this is the second leg. She did the rear left when she was two years old and she's now 11 years old and she just did the air, the fans drying my eyes out and she just did the right one. So anyone that's been through this before knows it's major, major operation. And so um, we are now two and a half weeks out from that. She had the operation, um, it was very successful. She's recovering very well. Luckily she's older now, so it's a little bit easier to keep her slower and we have some medications that do make her a bit drowsy as well um, but she's doing really well but as you can imagine that was very emotionally draining and it was about a week and a half from when it happened to when we got the surgery so i did get it done quickly um so that's been a lot and then we just got i i came up to the city for her appointment and it was where i was staying is about a two hour drive to the city and I was driving up and I've always known that my rear diff was going. I've known for a few years and they said to me, they said, um, wait till it gets really, really loud and then do it. So I was driving up to the city on Tuesday and I'm like, that's getting really loud. And then um, on Wednesday, I took Abby to her appointment, which is a two hour return drive from Faye's house. And, and on the way back, I'm like, that's really, really loud. And I said, I don't think I can drive this anymore. I don't feel comfortable driving anywhere. So that was just last Wednesday. So since Thursday, I have now been trying to find someone to fix my diff. I thought it would be really easy to fix my diff. Um, and it turns out it's not. So I'm now waiting for a call from a, a transmission specialist that they work on that. Um, and he's gonna call me back on Monday. And hopefully um, he's gonna come back with three quotes for a brand new reconditioned, I think, and just second hand. So if anybody here has any knowledge about diffs and what, what they recommend I should do, I'm probably only gonna keep the van for another year. Um, I'm not sure what to do, but I would love to hear. Um, but the catch is everyone here is so busy, they can't get me in for about two weeks. And I said, should I drive it? He goes, I wouldn't drive it. 
So I am going to be living in Faye's driveway for the next two weeks while I wait to get the van fixed. So that is what's been happening this year. That is my 2024. It has really kind of just been one thing after another. Um, but I am very grateful. Yes, Cheryl, it is time for a new van. And I was going to get a new van at the end of the year, um, but I can't just get a new van like that and I still need this one. So, yeah, I do realize this one is going. Um, that was why I always I thought I was gonna, this was going to be its last year. So, yeah, I, I will revisit that at the end of the year about getting a new van. Um, but anyway, I did have a lot of things, even though it sounds like there's been a lot going, I, had a lot, I did write a gratitude page. There's a lot I'm very grateful for. First of all, that I am in Western Australia um, where all this is happening, so I could be there for my mum. I could take Abby to her vet, the one I love and trust, that you know that was her vet for before we moved into the van. Um, that I have Faye, a wonderful friend Faye, who I know is on here, that I can stay at her house. And she came with me to the vet appointments with Abby and was so, so patient with me. She, Faye knows me really well. She watches me go through the ups and downs and watches me work things out, um, you know. Um, so I'm just very grateful. My sister was here to help me and my sister supported me. Um, so I'm just very grateful for those things and grateful that everything didn't happen at once. It has been one thing after another and not everything all at once. Because imagine if my mom was sick and Abby tore a crochet ligament and my diff went. That would have been really challenging. So I have a lot of gratitude and now I just have a lot of acceptance. Um, so yeah, so I'm sitting here in Faye's driveway, Faye's in the house with Abby. So Abby's in with house, Faye has two dogs and I did try to bring Abby out but she didn't want to come out. Um, so she's staying there. Um, so anyway. Um, that's all I have to say. Bron, thank you for, for Abby. Um, and hello to all oh, from Hawaii. Hello. And from Queensland. Hello. Wow, this is fantastic. Um, so I want to open up to you now. Does anybody have any questions for me that they want to ask? Anything you want to ask? Um, I'm happy to answer. Um, if there's, you want to know more about how I've dealt with things, um, the challenges I've had, um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm so lucky to have my van and I could park it. I slept in my mum's, my mum only has a tiny one bedroom place. So Abby and I slept in the van, you know, every night. And yeah, you know, it's, it's like having the van is really good. So, all right. Hello, Carolyn, what town is next? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I keep saying I want to go to Augusta and Faye's going to laugh because I've been saying for about a month when I left, when I was planning to leave the house sit in February, I was going to go to Augusta. So I'm still trying to go to Augusta um, and I'll come back to these comments in a minute. I'm still trying to go to Augusta, which is basically the very, I think, kind of south tip, southwest tip of Western Australia and they have a lighthouse there and you actually... I think it's, is it two oceans? Anyway, it might be two oceans, but anyway, it's right on the bottom, on the bottom. So I want to go there. I haven't been there for, I don't think, th since I first moved into there, maybe three and a half years. Um, so I really want to go to Augusta and do my last bit of the Southwest before it gets too cold. And then I want to head out to the wheat belt. I'm dying to get out to the wheat belt. Abby does need to be a bit more fit. We can do our rock climbing and everything. I love it out there. So that are my plan. There are my plans. Um, Ken, how do you deal with all of these things? All right, let me share with you my strategy that's got me through this. There's been a few things. The first thing is reaching out for help. Um, I have not tried to be brave or tough. I have let people know when I'm upset. I'll just, you know, especially with Faye and my sister, I'm really upset. This is really hard. It's really challenging. Share my thought processes with them and just 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 to let it out and accept this is how i feel i'm not not trying to pretend this isn't this is not upsetting the diff isn't to me the diff isn't upsetting the diff is just something abby and mum were the hardest because they were emotional the diff really is just pretty easy um so yeah just and ken said it's hard for him to reach out ken it's a new thing for me too it really is a new thing and it's wonderful <laughs> when you have people that you know are on your side you gotta be careful who you reach out to you know people are on your side um it was just that was so good i felt so supported i didn't feel alone um the second thing was i have 
activities that keep me grounded and relaxing and calm. So my art obviously has been very important for this. It has been like therapy to be able to do my art. That has been really, really good. There's also been the meditation that has been really, really good. So that's probably the three key things. And well, the fourth thing is, which I started to do yesterday and I reined myself in, excuse me, is don't get ahead of yourself. So just yesterday I was sitting there with Faye and I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, and I said, oh, and I'm like, no, I'm thinking about what the, mechan what the mechanic's gonna say on Monday when he calls. So I don't need to think about that because I'll deal with that when he calls. And so I, I need to deal with yesterday and today I just need to deal with today. So don't get ahead of yourself. Just deal with what you're actually dealing with at the moment. That's my key thing. Oh, Cheryl, thank you so much for that. That's lovely. <laughs> thank you for the super thanks. Um, all right, let me catch up with some of these comments quickly. Um, put in a secondhand diff. The back bearings are pretty tough. Minimum cost does and check the brakes. Okay, I actually just had the van serviced um, in end of February and they said the brakes were all good. So the van just had a full service, so it's good. But thanks, secondhand, I might do that. Hello from Bendigo. How long would you like to keep traveling? Wolf, um, in, indefinite. I have no intentions of stopping. I still have zero intentions of stopping. Um, I still love this lifestyle. Um, and I'm maybe thinking of spending all of 2025 in Tasmania. Um, that's definitely on the cards. I think I'd like to spend 2025 in Tasmania, in the van, maybe some combination house sits, but I'm, I'm not stopping anytime soon. Um, are you still getting some craft in? Um, I've been doing some rock painting. I did a little bit, I did some, I painted quite a few rocks when I was doing the house sit and I've finished some off here. So I have done some rock painting. Mostly it's just art. Um, I did make myself a little um, paintbrush holder with um, air dry clay, which I can't find now. <laughs> I, I, I know where the hanger is, but I can't find the, the, the brush holder. Oh, thank you very much, Ken, for that. That's so lovely. People, you don't have to give me money, it's okay. Um, so yeah, I, I haven't really been doing much other craft, I think. That's pretty well it. Um, how is my book coming along? My book is, it's stalled, but I'm getting there. So what I'm up to at the, mo up to at the moment is trying to get it off. Yeah, Cheryl, my, my, my brush hold is in a safe place somewhere. Um, with the book is I'm trying to get it all dictated onto Google Docs. And I'm dictating it because I can dictate faster than I can type. Um, so that's where it's at. But I actually have an idea in my mind for a format now and how I want to put it together. It's just a case of getting it in, which I'm going to focus on now that I'm sitting still in phase driveway. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, once I get, I just wanted to get these, these live yesterday and today through, and then I'm going to focus on getting the book done. That's going to be my main focus. So I realized yesterday I'm going to be 60 in December. <laughs> which is a bit of a shock to me. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking it'd be nice to maybe to have the book launch um, around my 60th birthday. That would be really nice. It gives me a goal to work towards. Um, so I think I'll do that. I think I'll do that. Um, Deb, I really hope everything settles down and works out for you. My van is similar to yours. and I try not to be in constant fear of breakdowns. So it's always in the back of my mind. Yeah, Deb, I, I, I don't have a fear because I know I'll always work it out and yeah, You'll, you'll work it out you'll it all things always work out they just do they just always work out um it's definitely nice to, you know yeah so Coralie's one of my patrons and she it's she just it's nice to always know what's going on so i do keep them up to date um and they've been really supportive and wonderful if i could manifest any kind of van what would you choose i'm van shopping and so confused I'm not a tiny woman. I'm on all my own and want to leave Hawaii to find my tribe. So Lorianne, um, yeah, buying a van is very individual. I actually love this one. I love the size and the low top. And I've just, just really been confirmed even more this year where I can park in my mum's carport. I can park in this carport and get into underground parking. So I really, my ideal van would be the brand, the new model high ace and put a pop top on it. That's ideal for me. Um, yeah, that's what I, that's what I want. And the new one is squarer, but I don't want any bigger because even now I managed to collect junk in here. 
you wouldn't believe it, but I still managed to collect junk. So I don't want any bigger because I don't want any more junk. I don't want any more stuff in my life. I, I really don't. Have these recent events changed how far you want to travel from home? No, not at all. Not at all, Cheryl, no. <laughs> no, I, I, no, not at all. I just, yeah, I don't have a fear of what's gonna happen. Um, like I said, I'm, I'd like to get to Tasmania. So no, you just always deal with things, what you can make the best and do what you can. So no, and I feel having gone through all of this, um, like I have come out, I've had a huge growth. I've had huge growth. Um, really have and really happy about that so going through all the struggles and it's brought me closer to my sisters um, but I don't have any fear of what's gonna happen no I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy to go I mean I'm only in Australia so yeah I'm, I'm only in Australia so you're all, you're in ever ever airplane away so that's all right um, do I have any tips for starting van life I do and I made a few videos on this, um, Douglas, I don't know if you call you Doug or Douglas, and my tip is start slowly and don't overwhelm yourself. It's, it's challenging, be kind to yourself and just start slowly. And like I, what I started doing was I started like going on overnight trips just in my car, things like that. Just really get used to going to different places in your car. Just get used to getting out of your comfort zone um, that's what you need to do because that's what van life's about getting out of your comfort zone trying new things you know tr learning how to deal with different situations so yeah put yourself out of your comfort zone but just start slowly I stayed in WA for the first year and I think for the first few months I just kept coming back up to the city you know while I worked things out so yeah just start slowly it's I don't know it's to me this is my life it's not I'm not on a holiday not trying to do something in 12 months or anything so just take it slow and simple try and do it as simple as you can and then add on as you need but start simple try and get rid of all the fancy stuff that's that's my advice um Bron's going to be 69 in may i don't know Bron. how does that happen i i wouldn't have thought you were that old either hey doug just turned 60 last sunday well happy birthday doug so you're a 64 baby as well um Laurieann, another Sagittarius, not to worry, we get better with age. <laughs> yeah, hey? actually I was saying to Faye this morning, because I'm also a year of the dragon, and, and this is the year of the dragon. I said to Faye, this is supposed to be my lucky year. <laughs> oh dear, okay, Doug, please, thank you. I will call you Doug. Jason, thanks Jason for that, great advice. Uh, not getting ahead of yourself, something I struggle with. Yeah, don't, yeah. It's, it's a struggle for everybody not to overthink things, definitely. Cheryl just turned 35. Wow, I think I was 35 when I moved back from Canada. 2000 and, oh no, that was 37. Yeah, 2001 I moved back. That doesn't seem like that long ago, Cheryl. Sage, how did you first find good free campsites or cheap ones? I've got wiki camps, but I find it hard to decide by reviews. It's experience, Sage. It's just trial and error. Trial and error. And I'll do a lot of drive-by. So if I'm going somewhere, I will maybe mark out some wiki camps that I think may be good. And I'll check them out when I'm going somewhere for future reference. So, and then I'll think, oh, that was good. Or, oh, no, I won't go back to that one. So that's, that's the other thing. Um, word of mouth is pretty good when you speak to other people at campsites. They will be able to give you a really good idea what it's like um and yeah just you just have to try it out and see if you like it or not you work out what you like and what you're willing to do or not and when i for yeah what i do now is a lot different to what i what i first did definitely definitely so yeah just trial and error just go out there try it like i said drive past and have a look and go oh, i don't like looks of that or i do and there are some places where i first started i'm like oh and i wouldn't stay there and i love it now so <laughs> you change as well so yeah just just trial and error is good um let's have a look carolyn will be 55 this year uh turns 1963 vintage looking to move to mexico thinking about checking work in tomorrow yeah mexico is that to retire there i there's a lot of people here retired to like things like barley and stuff bron green google find a camp oh 
Thanks, Bron. I haven't heard of that. I'll have to try that. Jason's 53 this June and getting braver each day to be living in the van. My caravan is the same age as me. Oh my goodness, Jason. I'll have to catch up. I miss Jason on the way back through. Jason's in South Australia. I miss Jason on the way back through, mostly because I got stuck in really hot weather. It was like going to be 40 something degrees when I was driving back. But next time, Jason, when I go into Tasmania, we'll have to catch up in person. Um, Lorianne, I'm laughing because I'm trying to escape my discomfort zone. <laughs> I miss the mainland. I'm 65. Yeah, and that's the thing. You want to get out of your comfort zone, but not all the time. You need to be able to jump back into your comfort zone. Don't overwhelm yourself. Try not to overwhelm yourself. Try to set yourself up for success. Do something uncomfortable, then go back to comfort. Uncomfortable comfort. I, that's what I do. Well, I was laughing. I said, say to Faye, I said, maybe I was in my comfort zone a bit too much last year. And the universe is like, yeah, we're just going to shake you around a bit and see what happens. <laughs> Travel bug. Have I missed much? Um, you missed what happened at the beginning of the year, but this will go up on uh, YouTube so you can catch up. Basically, I've had a lot of challenges to deal with this year. Um, well, 59 from me, I retire at 60 years old in February. Would like to try what you have done. Thanks. So I am semi-retired. I, I say I'm semi-retired. So I still do work part-time and I'll keep doing that until I don't want to kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, it's nice to have something to do on the road. Jason, one day, brother. Yeah, Jason will catch up. South Australia is the greatest state. Cheryl, I do love South Australia. I love it. My three favorite states in Australia, West Australia, South Australia, Tasmania. Those three states I could I could live in, but they're my favorite. And they're the, they're the quietest and the smallest. Um, yeah. Oh, Karen took her message back. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? Anything you want to ask me? Um, too much comfort stressed me out. I'm a nomad trapped in senior housing. Yeah, that's that's hard. That's really hard. Like just for me being sitting still for a couple of weeks is hard. Um, yes, I, I, I feel for you, Lorianne. I really do. I'm from Melbourne, but absolutely love South Australia. Yeah, I, I was surprised. It's really in Australia. South Australia always gets a bad rap. I feel they always make fun of it. And when I got there, it is such a beautiful state. Ah, I was blown away by it. Ah, oh, it's so spectacular. Um, yeah, I just love South Australia. And I haven't I haven't been there when it's cool enough to go a bit further north. I've never gone north of like the air highway, um, like too far, but yeah, it would, it's wonderful. Uh, Ken, would, would being a nomad be hard for me as an introvert in your opinion? Oh no, it's, it's easier if you're an introvert. <laughs> I would definitely, no, it's much easier. I would call myself an introvert. It's easier, Ken, because you can just hide out in your van and not talk to anybody if you don't want to. <laughs> no, it's really easy. It's much easier, I think. Yeah, it, it, it really is. I don't think it, you have to be, I think to be an extrovert, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I just hide out in my van. So I actually thought that, um, I because I, the other day, because I do work in my van, I was at the caravan park, you know, Abby was recovering. And people kept coming up and talking to me, um, like in the van. They're friendly. Like I've spoken to them in the caravan park. The few of us were there for a few weeks, and and they kept coming up. And I was trying to work, so I think I'm going to put a sign up saying, you know, um, um, I would love to speak to you, but I'm working at the moment. Can we catch up at another time? Uh, because I keep getting interrupted when I'm trying to work. And if anyone's ever done bookkeeping, it's really hard when you get interrupted all the time and you forget where you're at, especially if I'm doing payroll or something. Um, so yeah, so, um, oh, there's lots of, lots of comments going here. Uh, Carolyn is Melbourne. Uh, don't tell anyone we don't, we don't want you all here. <laughs> Share all about South Australia. Yeah. Um, those first steps are the hardest, especially some of my fear. Advice on beating those fears. Um, it depends what fears do you have, Sage? Could you be more specific and let me know what you have fears about? And I can address that. So just, just, just write in the comments what your fears are. Um, Jason, living in a van is best for introverts, especially in quite South Australia. Yeah, you can just, so many small country towns you can hang out in. Yeah, it's fantastic. Do you feel safe? That's one thing holding you back. Um, I feel safe. I feel more safe in certain areas than others. I feel, um, I felt, I want to admit, I felt less safe going up the East Coast where there's more people and not just more people, but I feel probably more 
more drugs, more that kind of thing. Um, I did feel that. A lot more people, I would say, uh, are technically homeless, living in their vans and everything at a lot of the campgrounds and things like that. Um, just in general, a lot more people. When there's a lot more people, I feel less safe. Um, but yeah, I felt I felt really safe in like South Australia, Tasmania, West Australia, very safe. Um, when you get down to the smaller country towns in the east, I felt very safe. But most of the time, yes, I do feel very safe. I do. But I I've lived alone for most of my life. And I feel safer in my van than I did in a house. Because in a house, I always had fears that someone could. I lived in a big house. Someone could break in. I wouldn't even know. But no one's going to break in the van without me knowing. So I feel safe because at least I know that they're there. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, I don't know. I do feel safe. Um, what have we got here? I love the wall behind you. My, my book bag. <laughs> this is my book bag <laughs> with all my books in it. This is the book I'm, I'm uh, working on. Um, it's hard to find camps alone or are they all quite full? Well, I was definitely spoiled in COVID and now there are definitely more people around and it varies it varies on time of year like if it's a weekend public holiday things like that and where you go so I'm imagining when I get back out into the wheat belt it will be quieter usually it's quieter out there most people stick to the coast and so the wheat belt's usually a lot quieter. So it does depend on the time of year, like school holidays. If you're in, you know, Southwest, it's really busy. Depends where you go. You can definitely still find quiet places. And I do tend to go to the quiet places. And they're the places that usually don't have many amenities and things like that aren't close to bigger towns. So you can still do it. It does, does depend. Karen, my van is ready to go. It'll be my home like yours. I'm so anxious about getting in and actually driving away. I know I just have to do it. I keep making excuses to delay. Oh, I was so excited to get in and drive away. I couldn't drive away fast enough, Karen. I couldn't drive away fast enough. My first night in the van, I was like, oh, I was so good. I was so happy. So yeah, just do it because once you do it, I think you'll be fine. Sleep in your driveway for a night or two, then your local park. Yeah, well, actually, I, f I, f no, I, I feel safer. I feel safer out in the bush than I do in the driveway, I'll be honest. Um, Love to see you on video. I'm almost 72. We're doing van life from the end of May. Oh, that's so good. Um, I actually, I'm catching up with, um, there's another viewer and she's uh, lives up in Broome and she um, she's on Patreon and she's bought a van and she's coming down to Perth. Sorry, my hair's going away. And she's coming down to Perth on Monday to pick up her van and she's going to be down for two weeks. Hopefully going to catch up with her. And there's another lady from Patreon who actually is not far from here and she's coming over this afternoon with her van to check out. So yeah, it's really cool. Everyone, a lot of people are getting into vans now and I think it's wonderful. Uh, so many older single women doing it and yeah, I just love to catch up with everybody. It's so good. Um, always trust your gut. We dismiss feelings of unease at times too easy. Very, yeah, very good advice. Always go with my gut. I learned to do that. Go with my gut. Sage, I guess getting past the unknown of new places and not getting lost on the way, finding safe places to stay. I have lived alone for years, but in unknown places, hard for me. So Sage, I recommend, I, I recommend, this is what I did for about a year. Just start in your car going to different neighborhoods all the time like I had my dog so on the weekends I would look up a park I would just go to a different park um, every weekend I would go to a different park so I had, to, I had to get used to driving somewhere new had to get used to being somewhere new and that really really helps just even your in your daily life try and get try and go to different places even in locally yeah that that will help you because then you get more you get comfort you get faith in yourself and getting lost is some of the best places you find when you get lost. Faye will agree with that. Getting lost is is, is, is okay. So um, that's why, yeah, get lost and then work out how to get yourself back. And then the more you do that, the more confidence you get. So it just takes little things to build your confidence. So just start going to different places and you go a bit further, a bit further, a bit further. Um, yeah, that's that's the best way to get over unknown places. Just just do it close so you're not going too far. You don't have to drive hours, drive 15 minutes to somewhere you've never been before. That's my recommendation. 
because I was the same. I had become quite a hermit um, and I wasn't going more than five kilometers past my house. So just start going out. You'll get there. You will. You really will. Um, Sage, I've gone to same crank several times, but hard to venture beyond that. Yeah. Don't even worry about your campground. Just get in your car and go to a different sub. Uh, that, honestly, that's what I would do. Definitely, that's what I would do. Start, start small. Start small. Um, Carly, I can recommend a game called Getting Lost that gets you out of your comfort zone in a fun way. Yeah, I did see Carly did a video on that, I think. Um, what dog breed do you have? Abby is a uh, RSPCA special. I got her from the RSPCA and I got her a DNA tested. So she is half a beagle, a quarter of an American staffy, and a quarter mixed, it said. Um, so very beagle, has a beagle howl, beagle nose, sniffs, everything. Um, yeah, and well, well, the quarter mixed I say is quarter crazy. Yeah, she, she's crazy. Um, so yeah, but yeah, that's Abby. She's gorgeous. Lorianne, think of it like this. You're never lost, you're just misplaced. I carry a GPS. Yeah, I used the, G learned how to navigate. So I used to read maps when I was a kid. I was always the navigator on our road trips, but I now can just, because your phone always has a GPS on it. And so get used to navigating with your GPS without putting directions in. Just, um, just work out where you can, you know, like where you can go have a look try and make sure you can orientate yourself which way is which way am I facing and things like that because um, there have been a few times <clears throat> I have gone down a track that wasn't where I expected and there is actually no service but your GPS is still working um, and I managed to get myself out so things like that so yeah um, Sage hang on. Sage also have my dog yeah yeah Sage take your dog to different different parks all around that's because you got your dog with you it's safe but just take your dog to a different part I did that for a year um, that was my start yeah just go different yeah don't they say pets take after their owners <laughs> I'm more than a quarter crazy <laughs> so Cheryl I like that oh that's so funny oh dear yeah thanks Cheryl <laughs> Oh dear. Would you ever consider getting a block of land one day as a permanent park? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Yes. Yes. Jason, what I, what I kind of think, um, I want an art studio now. I would like an art studio. Um, so that's why when I go to Tasmania, I'm, hoping to maybe be able to rent a shed or something there where I can set up an art studio and have as a base so I would try that first um, but I would like to be able to have an art studio where I could you know paint and have everything set up and leave it and then yeah go off or whatever and come back so um, yes that is definitely a possibility definitely not 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 that I want to permanently park there um, not that I want to permanently park there but just to have more for have an art studio yeah that's to more to have an art studio. I, 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 like that last house sit that I did in a small country town, that confirmed for me I am not ready to sit still, because that was a tiny country town. I get a drink of water. Um, and I no, I was like no, a couple of weeks. I'm like no, I want to be traveling, so I'm not ready to sit still just yet. I know that, but I also kind of don't really want to just be. I know. Yeah, I just. It changes each year, so like next year, I kind of would really like to say to go to Tasmania, um, focus on art, maybe write a studio. Tasmania is very conducive to being creative, you know, maybe do another book, things like that. Um, but yeah, but I still like to try and move around in my van, or really, I, and I get more inspiration and creativity from moving around in my van, definitely. Um, off grid tiny house on rural land, that's what I'm doing, Sage, slowly but surely. All right. Well, we're all just gonna come and live with you, Jason. <laughs> just get a let, get just get a block of land big enough for Sage and I, and we'll come and join you. Because <laughs> I think Sage is in, you're in West Australia, Sage, I believe. I'm I'm pretty sure. Still possible. It's not super high prices. Tasmania is too cold. Yeah, it it is cold. That's why I thought there might be a combination of house sitting, 
I haven't ruled that. Oh, Sage is in South Australia. I apologize. I, I for some reason I thought you're in WA. I don't know why. Um, um, but what was I going to say? Yeah, Tasmania is, is cold. Um, but that's why I think maybe house sitting or maybe for the winter rent, rent a place. I, I don't know yet. I don't know. I just have, I always have ideas and they change rapidly. They change. Um, what about investing in a bigger van? No, <laughs> no. Um, I don't really want a bigger, I think bigger van wouldn't solve my problem. I couldn't get a van big enough. I would really like to be able to have a proper studio where everything can just stay. Uh, I've watched a few people I watch on YouTube and it doesn't have to be huge you know it doesn't have to be a huge space but you just you can have art just hanging on the wall all the time and you're working on multiple things and you have all the paints out whereas whenever I'm in a van I have to pack up and move things so yeah I would rather be able to rent like a just a shed even just a shed you know where I can have everything set up so yeah I big I don't want a bigger van because this this is so much easier to travel around in yeah this is for my lifestyle this is much easier definitely much easier um, what's your fav most favorite painting that you made I don't think I have a favorite I don't have a favorite um, I really don't I don't have a favorite I feel like I'm still kind of working on a style I have different things I like to do different things for different like I have some things that I find more relaxing and other things where I feel more creative, but I haven't got a favorite painting just yet. I haven't got a favorite painting yet. Um, oh, there's something that you don't know. I'm gonna do an art show <laughs> at the end of the year. So I am going in an art show in, I think it's in October. I have to submit up to six artworks in September and it's going to be in Wild Catchem. <laughs> so um, let me also, I'm gonna spell this on here for people while I think this is how you spell it while catch them all right so I put it on the comments that's that's where I'm going to do the show in Western Australia um, it's a very small country town in West Australia and it's out in the wheat belt and it is $20 to go on the show and I'm just doing it for the experience right so I just want to have the experience and it gives me something to work towards um, so I actually have some canvases yesterday Faye and I went out and I bought a tabletop easel um, so I'm gonna start painting on canvases which you know it might be tonight I'm not sure um, so yeah so I'm gonna do an art show um, I don't know where this is going that favorite painting not yet but I'm working towards it and the art show I think is gonna inspire me to keep going um, I want to sell my photography on the road and paint outdoors is there a craft circus in Australia um, so I looked into selling my art at things like the markets and things because they have one down in Walpole and you need to have insurance <sighs> you need insurance so that rules that out so I, I, I yeah I'm not they probably do and actually there are lots of these little um, markets you can you can sell stuff but you have to be a kind of legitimate business with insurance um, the other thing I've thought about is just selling out of my van basically you can just, you know, you're a campground, you can open up and go, yeah, see if anyone's interested. That's always, uh, that's always an option. Um, oh, it's going too fast now. Come back, come back. Hang on. Um, how's Abby? Abby's really good. I took her for a little walk this morning. Um, I tried it a few days ago and she came back too lame. So we rested over a couple of days. And this morning we did another little walk. It was about 400 meters altogether. I checked it on my phone, so that's how little it was. The, the trick is trying to get her to go slow. She wants to go fast. So I'm like going slow, go slow, go slow. Um, and it was really good. So we'll see how she pulls up today if she comes out too lame. But she's starting to be able to do short walks. And she actually is really good. Look, she loves it here. Faye's got two dogs. She loves Faye. Um, so it's really good. It's nice for her to have the company of other dogs, I think. And they kind of all hang out together. It's really lovely. They're a cute little pack. Um, so yeah, she's doing really good. Thanks for asking, Sage. Um, you want to house sit ghosts? I'm sure there's lots of them around. Bron, I know someone tells you is making a room in her shed. Oh, thanks, Bron. That's Bron spent a year, I think, in Tassie. Um, I made the mistake of looking at the high, high top Mercedes cargo van and that's all I can think of. 
Yes, well, Diana that's coming around this afternoon has a Sprinter van and we're going to check that out. But I know from my experience that this size is the best for me. I, I know from, and I know me, this size is the best for me for now. So yeah, and I'm only small. I'm only like five foot three. So I'm not a very tall person. So this van is really good for me. Um, that's what I have. Great idea to do little shows to get used to it. Exciting. Yeah, I think it's pretty, well, it's exciting and terrifying all at the same time. Um, but yeah, it's only $20. It'll be good. And you can sell works there as well. You can, your, your work is basically for sale as well. So the insurance in SA isn't expensive. It's about 200 a year for a liability. Oh, that's good to know. Who did you go through, Cheryl? Is, can you tell me the insurance company that you use? I wouldn't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. Um, I have liability insurance for my bookkeeping. That's professional. I have professional indemnity. Yeah, I don't know. Do you find it easy to make videos? That's a loaded question. <laughs> I find physical action of making videos very easy. Yes. The mental, emotional, I struggled with because I was struggling with imposter syndrome. So I shared this on my Patreon. So I feel like I'm doing better now. I feel like I may have turned a corner now. Um, so like I did, some of you may have been here for a while and you may have seen I had kind of few, two instances where my channel kind of grew really rapidly um, last year. And I think the first time was May and then in June it went crazy. And it freaks me right out. It, and I just pull back, I go, whoa, what's going on? That's too many people. It was just freaked me right out. And I think because I have imposter syndrome. Um, but now I feel much better. I feel much better. I've been through a lot this year. I feel much better and I feel more comfortable with being myself and people accepting me. And yeah, and that people, I keep, you know what does it? I keep getting emails from people telling me how much I've inspired them and how grateful they are that I've shared my story. And that's why I feel like, yeah, I, I'm doing the right thing. This is good. I, yeah, I'm the right person to do this. It's okay. So that's where I challenge. Physically, I'm, I love it. Absolutely love making videos. Love it, love it, love it. Love the whole process, the filming, the editing. Love it. I just, I have fun with it. I do goofy things. I laugh at myself. I love it. Some markets are fully booked out months in advance too. I'm turning 56 this year. I'm going to sell my... 10 acre farmlet next spring. I'll be buying a smaller home on normal house block. I plan to do a van and it'll take off for a few years. Oh, that's excellent. Any regrets? I'm tall. It's expensive. I know how expensive they are to fix. Yeah, that's that's one thing too. The, the imports get expensive to fix. Um, I do know that. My friends have a motor home on a Fiat or something. They had to wait seven months for parts and it cost a fortune to get it fixed. Um, your current insurance may be able to advise you to find the insurance you need. True. True. Yes. Actually, I could, yeah, I might be able to do that. What any software do you use? I do everything on iMovie because it's free. <laughs> and I have an iPhone. So I film everything on my iPhone. And this is still an iPhone 12. iPhone 12. I film everything on here. And I used to edit everything on my phone. You can film and edit and upload everything from your phone. It's only in... January last year yeah that I bought the MacBook um, and so now I edit on the MacBook which is definitely easier than the tiny screen on the phone so I edit on the MacBook now um, but iMovie is free and it's good I think it's fine for what I'm doing I'm not trying to do fancy stuff um, if it wasn't for your channel and Coralie's I wouldn't have had the confidence to start oh Jason that's so sweet oh that's so nice Carolyn, we love watching you, Brian. That's why you're here. Thank you, Carolyn. And I'm kind of getting that now. <laughs> I'm getting it. You know, we all have to deal with um with our issues. And yeah, YouTube's been a really good way for me to deal with my issues. <laughs> really good. I can't remember now who you went with, but a lot of the usual companies offered it. I remember I rang around for a few quotes. The amount it costs based on how much you think you will earn. Oh, all right. I'll have to remember that. Um... Mine was for hobby level income under 40k. Oh, all right. I thought it was going to be thousands of dollars. So thank you for telling me that. I will definitely look into getting the liability insurance and doing some markets. Definitely. Because the Walpole market, it is tiny. 
Um, I've been there myself a couple of times. It's tiny. They maybe have 15 stalls. That's it. So, yeah. Um, can you do a live or a zoom of the art show? Imposter syndrome. Just pretend you have a split personality. You do inspire. I, I think I already have a split personality, Laurie. We don't need to worry about that. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I will definitely try and do a video of the art show. I think that would be really good. Um, yeah, I'll definitely see what I can do. I'm not sure what the filming rights are going to be in there. I have no idea. What was your most favourite place to visit? Just to say Tasmania. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Tasmania. Tasmania. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Tasmania because of the, the, the landscape, the people, the clean air, the amazing food. The positive energy, the forest, the water, it's just, it's, I just love Tasmania. Tasmania is, is just a great spot for me. Love it. Um, I love your chat. Just starting out slowly and I find your videos. Oh, thanks, Bruni. Do you feel like your Patreon and having a more intimate space have helped you with your imposter syndrome? Yes, Carly. Patreon definitely made me realize the more personal I got, the more, the more I shared personally on Patreon, the more other people came forward that they were felt the same way. And that's when I realized like you're not alone and that we, I am attracting like people. And so that's why we're all here. Um, so yeah, it really did help. Yes, definitely. Yeah, good point. It, de it definitely helped. Now you've probably, I'm sure you've seen a turning point. Carly, Carly's been there from day one. I'm sure you've seen a turning point where I've got a lot more personal and sharing things. So yeah, it's been a huge personal growth thing for me. Huge. Um, Find your video so helpful. Heading off for a first camp with dog in two weeks. Oh, awesome. Where are you going to go, Bruni? Where's your first camp going to be? Who? Hey? Where is it going to go? Two dogs, hey? One dog's enough. Um, met a fellow and they've been following you. Oh, that's so lovely, hey? That's so lovely. How long am I going for? 56 minutes. I'm going to keep this to an hour because I have some other things to do today. <laughs> I might, I might, let me see if I can give you, I'll give you a quick show of art. I'm going to move, so just hopefully this doesn't, the phone is sitting precariously on the bed. Hang on a second, let me grab some books. Let me grab books. One, two, this is last night. Let me just grab some stuff for you. All right, you're still there? Oh, you are. Okay, let me show you. Um, well, this was last night. This is what I did last night. That was last night. <laughs> this is just more, this is very relaxing for me. So I'm, yeah, just needed something relaxing. That was last night. And then I painted the cover of my journal, of my art sketchbook. And anyone that's in Australia interested, this is a, I'll show you on the back. This is a born, a born journal. So it's Office Works brand. It was $16. It's A4, 180 GSM and 128 pages. And I gotta tell you, this is really good quality. This is phenomenal for $16 in Australia. So I'm doing acrylic paints and watercolor and everything on this. So I've done this one. I'm not sure what you've seen. Yeah, I've done oh yeah, I don't think I've done the video for a while. That one. Oh, this is a huge big double spread. I don't even know if I can get it on. Um, and then this one was I, I had too much paint and so I just painted and then I doodled on front and top of it. That's that one. This one, I can't remember when I did the video. This one, everyone on Patreon has seen these. Uh, this one I've just got lots of um, stuff going. Yeah, I don't think you've seen these. I've got lots of oops, pages going. Yep. And then I'm, I'm all over the place as you can see I just keep trying different things and then oh this was a relaxing one I did the other night there's just that I think that's oh no there's these ones uh, and this one I just I'm all over the place and then I've got some more kind of like um proper ones I've been doing I oh I signed up for Skillshare Skillshare is really good. So, um, because I had a lot to do this year, like art, books, children's books, things like that, I want to try and digitize my art. Um, I did pay for one course, 
and then I thought about Skillshare and I found a code that got me 40% um, off. I got it for $97 for the year. And I've been doing courses on there, which has been really good. So I've been doing some landscapes. Um, February. I'm not sure when I made my uh, video. When did I make my video? Anyway, I've been doing some more landscapes in here. That's actually from a photo I had. They will recognize that. We're looking at the photo. That's actually, you know, my banner on my YouTube channel? That's the photo that that's from. So that's where that's from. Um, and then, you know, I've just been doing more landscapes. I really like this one. Um, they were the ones I did myself. And then this was doing a, um, doing a um, Skillshare course on like landscapes and sunsets. That one's really good. I learned how to do water reflections. Hang on, people ask me questions. I have to come back to those. So yeah, different, um, the beach. So I've been doing that. And then, I don't think there's anything in the photo book, yeah. That's mostly what I've been doing. All right, I've also been doing, um, hang on, I've also been doing sketches. So I'm still sketching in my little book here. And um, I'll just show you the last couple. So I, I was doing the 100 day challenge. So I've just been doing some, I was working on architecture in here, different, different um, things. So yeah, I'm kind of all over the place with things. Yeah, that's kind of the gist of what I've been doing. So there's lots of art, no shortage of art. All right, let's have a look at the comments that I just missed. Let's have a look. Um, 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 uh, uh, Sunshine Coast, two times 20 kilo dogs, first camp ever. Oh, that should be good. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few camps up there. Yeah, your art, all right. Ken, very nice, thank you. Ken, oh, I want, that fabric in that orange design. I know, this is this is so cool. <laughs> I had so much fun with that. It was so much fun. Um, sweet dreams of, are you going to bed, Annie? It's probably getting late. The orange really is lovely. Love your journal. The insurance is a tax write-off and you can write off, etc. But hey, you said you do bookkeeping, yeah, so I do know it's a tax write-off. Thanks, Laurie-Ann. Love your art. Thank you. Timu has some great art stuff, but a bit, bit hard if you haven't noticed. I actually started with stuff from Timu. Um, a lot of the stuff I had, um, I did get from Timu, um, but yeah, I have found, like, this This was the best bargain I've ever found. This one, and they make a smaller one, so when um, I've got another smaller one, got my smaller one's finished, I will get the smaller one for $13, but the, honestly, this is such good quality paper and hardcover for $16. Our supplies are expensive in Australia, um, so I was really surprised. Very good. Um, love the green leaf pattern. Thank you. They're beautiful drawings. The green one is gorgeous, like a beautiful bed of leaves. I'm not sure what the green one is now. That's okay. Oh, I know what you mean, but I had leftover paint. Um, good night, Brenda. Safe travels. Good night, Doug. Thank you for watching. I love all the flowers and nature themed to your art. Have you decided on a brand of paint yet, or are you still in the trial phase? Cheryl, Cheryl, I think. Um, so, there's obviously different materials, different, what's the word I'm looking for? Medias, mediums. So um, acrylic paint. I am. I'm really liking the Liquitex. Got to be honest, for price and how good it is. Um, so I have bought a few more tubes of the Liquitex Basics. Um, I do really like them. Um, and I also am using the um, Reeves in the smaller tubes um, for different colors. Um, Watercolor, I still using the, the a Timu brand, which which is working really well for me. I'm quite happy with it. Um, um, I've got a lot of Posca pens. <laughs> I bought more Posca pens. I'm loving that. Um, I've got some Atelier interactive acrylics, which I haven't tried yet. Um, so yeah, I do think for the level I'm at, um, Liquitex is working really well. Um, what else did I have? I think Liquitex Basics is kind of the one I'm going for. I've also got the um, acrylic inks. I'm really loving them. <laughs> yeah, I'm really loving them. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to use up my supplies now. I don't think I need to buy any more mediums. I've got more than enough. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to use up all the supplies I have. 
and be really prolific. That's why I got the tabletop easel because I really want to start painting like upright and on canvases and things. And that'll give me a better idea because I've been doing a lot of mucking around and kind of stuff. So yeah, haven't decided, but there's so much to choose from. Uh, let me have a look. I love those landscapes. Really, like, have you heard of Domestica? No, I'm not sure what is. Lorianne, what's Domestica? Can you please let me know? The Cosy landscapes are just gorgeous. Yeah, the landscapes are really nice. And I do really enjoy the landscapes. At first I thought I couldn't do it. Um, but doing the Skillshare course, I learned different techniques and everything. It's really good. Um, love the sunset. I did the sunset with my um, acrylic gouache. So I'm using, using Turner's acrylic gouache. I really like acrylic gouache. I really like it. Uh, my art has improved immensely from my initial scribbles. I know. I didn't like the Quatex. I found myself using Matisse and Montmart. I actually have Montmart as well. I have Montmart watercolor tubes. Um, I do have some Montmart acrylics as well. But also, I'm using up the Reeves first because I went to a, I went to an op shop with Faye oh, this back in January, I think, and we just asked if they had any adult art supplies, and they had Montmart brand new acrylic tubes and watercolor tubes, and I got them for like four dollars each for the whole pack. Um, I failed finger painting my but my daughter's an exhibiting artist in all of her wonderful gift. I failed finger painting as well, um, but don't give up on yourself. Every, there's an artist in everybody. I, I know that now. And you just have to be patient with yourself. And it's your mindset. Um, it's your mindset. You need to skip, you need to engage that right right brain. Right brain. Get your right brain working. Get out of your left brain. That has been my problem. Um, I have one atelier paint that I haven't had the chance to do. The magic re-wet thing yeah i actually find that a bit frustrating with the atelier that it re-wets so i think that's why but i'm trying to use up everything i've got so many supplies as you've all seen okay love the channel since you started oh that's so nice all right i think we're coming up we've all oh, we've done 66 minutes let's call it a day the people that are in um north america are going to bed <laughs> i think it's very late for them and yeah just look thank you everybody for being here it's so nice to connect with everybody. I really felt disconnected and that's one of the reasons I like I want to start making videos but I didn't know where to go. I didn't know I didn't know how to feel that connection so when I'm filming I'm talking to you but this has been so nice um, to chat with everybody. It really has and look we'll do more lives. We'll, we'll do more lives. I, what happened is I had a I had a change in attitude. You know like how you spend your life waiting for things to be perfect before you do something that's been the, something I've been doing and I'm kind of like I'm like I'm in phase driveway let's just do a live stream from the driveway it's okay I can still make videos while I'm here in the van I've still got a lot to share so I'm just gonna be like wherever I am that's where it's gonna be all right so I definitely will doing this more I've had a huge attitude shift like I said I've let go of the imposter syndrome and I uh, yeah I love connecting with you all and thank you so much for everything and look, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. It is Sunday here. It's probably Saturday for some people. Um, and oh, thanks for watching from Mexico. That's so lovely. And yeah, thank you again, everybody. You're just, honestly, you are so wonderful. And this has been a real journey for me. And oh, so many of you are moving into vans, which is so exciting. Uh, it's so exciting. And please, um, my email address is always in the description. Um, if you want to meet up please let me know because I do love catching up with everybody I, I really do it's so exciting to meet other people that are out there doing it, it really, and even if you're not doing it even if you're just in a house and I'm I mean you're, you want to meet up that's good too I just like to meet people it's wonderful all right thank you everybody have a wonderful day and I've got to remember how to close this off and I will see you hopefully I'll have another video up soon on YouTube all right bye everybody